Like all cars, there are some adjustments to make when you first get in. Seat position, door, interior mirrors, to name just a couple. But with an EV, there are very many more. Setting up an EV is often put off, but to get the most out of your car, just take a few minutes to go through all the settings. It will make your motoring much more enjoyable. Dave takes it on, explores what your new EV is likely to have that needs adjusting. Now please note, all EVs are different, and some of the settings are only available on top-of-the-range models, the operating systems will be very different, many features will be called something totally different. But let's tackle the common features you will find, where to adjust them, and how you might set them initially. Now in all cases, make use of the manufacturer's handbook. I'll refer to this as RTI, read the instructions. Now if you enjoy these videos, please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more in this series. And also for those who wish to support the channel financially, we do have a Patreon membership starting from just £3 a month. Check it out on patreon.com, Dave takes it on. Now the very first setting when you get in should be the seat position. Most EVs have electrically adjustable seats. For those with manual adjustments, the controls will almost, almost certainly be in the normal location along the front of the seat for the back and forth setting and at the side for the backrest and height. Electric cars can be very different. Often there will be a series of buttons on the side of the seat base between the seat and the driver's door. One rocker switch will be for back and forth, one for the backrest recline and a third rocker switch for height adjustment. A few will put those rocker switches on the driver's door, while others, in a minimalist approach, have no buttons at all and can only be accessed from a section on the display screen. Now remember, in most cases, you only adjust this once for normal driving, and only a second occasion if someone else has been driving and has moved your seat. Now, steering wheel position. Again, maybe manual or electrical control, usually with a lever underneath the steering wheel or, again, a setting on the display. Once your seat position is comfortable, adjust the steering wheel in and out, up and down, to be within easy reach. And also remember that on long drives, many of us rest an elbow on the door cushion or centre console. Adjust the wheel so you can comfortably do whichever you prefer. Door mirrors. Almost always electric mirrors, and almost always the control is on the driver's door. But again, there are a few exceptions with uh, controls that are purely on the display. Now set the mirrors as you like them. Easy entry. If you are shorter than my 6 foot 3, you might find the seat is quite a way forward, making getting in and out a bit of an effort. Many cars have an easy entry mode, where when you stop and put it into park or turn it off, the driver's seat will move to its rearmost position and the steering wheel may rise up to its height limit. This will be a selectable feature on the main display, RTI. But beware, the seat can move back while the rear passenger is still trying to get out. Let them out first before you press park or switch your car off. Profiles. Many EVs have a memory or profile setting, RTI. Profile or memory means you name the person, in my case Dave, you adjust your seat position, steering wheel position, door mirrors, and then save it as a profile or memory. Once saved, no matter who has driven the car, no matter how much the seats, mirrors and steering wheel have all been messed with, one push of your profile button returns all these to your chosen settings. This is very handy if you share your car with a partner or family member. And don't forget, they also can create and save a profile under their name. And also realise that a profile is not only for people. On long journeys, I sometimes stop for a nap. I have a nap profile, which pushes the seat right back and lowers the backrest as horizontal as it can go, while raising the steering wheel out the way. When I'm ready to drive, I just press Dave, and a few seconds I'm ready to go. Driving modes. 
all EVs have driving modes with common names such as Eco, Economy, Normal, Sport, Ludicrous and the like. Because the power is instant and constant, even the slowest, cheapest EV is really very quick. The standard mode in many cases will be the mode you should be in for most of your motoring. If particularly interested in economy or trying to stretch out a leg of a journey, chill or eco mode may help, but it's often at the price of a feature. For example, it may disable or reduce the air conditioning, or it may reduce acceleration. But both of these can be done manually just as well. I get a warning on my car. It says stay below 60 mile an hour to reach your destination. So if you're really slow on state of charge, just slow down. And manually turning up the air conditioning a few degrees in summer or down a few degrees in winter does exactly the same. I would suggest start in normal mode or standard mode and see how you get on. Steering mode. Because many EVs can self-park, the steering wheel is normally controlled or assisted by an electric motor. Steering mode merely lets you choose how hard or easy it is to turn the steering wheel. I have a very quick EV, but my steering is always set to easy or comfort mode. If ever I want to go hurtling through country bends at breakneck speeds, I might try a different mode. But in four years of EV driving, I never have. Try easy or comfort as an initial setting. Headlights. Most EVs have an auto on off setting where the headlights will look after themselves and they do a pretty good job. I do find mine gets a bit confused in fog when I want them on, but the car still thinks it's daylight and says no. So leave them set to auto on the one or two occasions a year when you have to select it manually. Just make sure you know how to do it at RTI. Wipers. Again, almost all have an auto setting. Most have a stalk with slow, intermittent, fast settings that you can choose manually. Some have settings you can only change on the display. Well, almost, but a little bit more on that later. In four years driving an EV, I found the auto setting perfectly good almost 99% of the time. A few occasions, I took over. Suspension. I set mine to normal or comfort and find it goes round bends really very quickly and safely. Probably thanks to a one-ton battery underneath the car holding it down onto the road. I don't want to shake the fillings out of my teeth in sport or GT mode. Leave that to the boy racers who, one day, will find that the comfort setting goes round bends just as quickly and far, far more comfortably. Suspension height settings. In top of the range models, you might get air suspension or height adjustable suspension. I have air suspension. It should normally always be in low mode for better aerodynamics and therefore range, but I can set it to high if I want to get over, say, a particularly high bump or curb. So 99% of the time it's in auto. One really useful feature is a memory mode if it's included, RTI. This allows you to set the suspension to its highest setting at chosen locations, home for example, to allow easier getting in and out for you and your passengers. That's great as I grow older. Mine always automatically raises to the highest setting when I get home or at any older relatives I visit regularly. If you look at the photos of my car at home, it's always at a high setting, but automatically lowers to low once driving. Heating and ventilation. This will almost certainly be very different to your old ICE car. Most have display-only controls, but some still have physical knobs or wheels. As a general rule, you shouldn't touch these settings very much at all once you set the initial values. Where the air comes out, windscreen, footwell or middle, very rarely changes. It tends to be the same all year round. Likewise, temperature. Mine is usually set to 19 or 20 degrees and left there all year round. I know I could probably get slightly more range if I fiddle with it, adjust it up a bit more day to day. And the windscreen can mist up if I get in soaking wet. But I use my cabin precondition feature extensively. 
hot or cold, wet or dry. I precondition the cabin so that the car is exactly right when I get into it. The windows will be defrosted and demisted. The cabin will be comfortable and my seat will be warm. I have been driving EVs for over four years and I rarely touch these controls other than when several people get in soaking wet and the windscreen begins to mist up. Then I just press my defro defrost and demist icon on my display. Problem solved. The system reverts back to my chosen settings after a preset time period. This feature can also usually be controlled from the smartphone app. And we'll be covering this subject in the next, next in this series, so please subscribe so you don't miss it. Don't make life complicated. My wife does. She believes that turning her side of the car on full in the winter warms her up quicker. But then she overheats and has to turn it down, then gets too cold and fiddles with it constantly. Me? I just sit back and wait a few minutes and suddenly find, hey, it's nice and warm. Satnav. Whatever system you have, it will probably have a number of settings that are really useful. The ones I use include home and work presets. I can preset SatNav to my home address just by swiping the navigate icon down. And I use this all the time. Now every journey, I set SatNav. Even if I'm just returning home from a restaurant, it's just a habit. But I do it for two reasons. Number one, the car knows where it is and tells me if I can get there on the state of charge I currently have. Well, it's not critical if I'm at a restaurant three miles away and I checked before we set off. But have you ever forgotten to fill up with petrol or check uh, the state of charge or charge before you go? I have. Two, my sat-nav has live active traffic. So if there's heavy traffic or there's been an accident or road is closed for roadworks, my car will divert me around them. Regularly, my car takes a different route when I visit Jonas, my oldest son, living about six miles away. I never question it for these differences. I assume it has information I don't have, i.e. what's happening at a particular junction four miles ahead. I set work to where Jonas lives for these same reasons. Voice command. Now, on my car, I can ignore almost all the above and use voice commands for most of it. It really is very comprehensive in what it can control. Some voice recognition systems are totally useless. I think they may, may be set to a different language, but mine is actually really good. I regularly use mine for sat-nav using the command navigate to or find me a restaurant nearby while I'm driving. So much safer. I can also control many of the car's features this way, quick and easy like temperature with the command increase cabin temperature. And that raises the temperature as set three degrees. These are the initial key settings you will need to adjust to get your new EV the way you want it. As always, I suggest RTI. It passes a good hour or so if you're bored with TV, and I still do it, and I still find things I never knew my car could do. Some are not needed, but occasionally I find one that is. Well, thanks for watching to the end. I'm Dave. You may be interested in videos in one of my other series, such as myths or my technical reports. Please subscribe so you can be notified every time we release a new video. Also, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon. I do spend quite a lot on charging for my regular road trips, sometimes at ridiculous prices, and if I'm out all day, I do need to eat. So a small contribution will allow me to travel further afield and do even more filming. You can find me at patreon.com forward slash Dave Takes It On.